If you have a horse that has a big rotational problem, either to his in a lot, to, to his out a lot, whatever, you can have two choices. In your work, you can decide that you want to correct that with your shoe. So you, if you're toe in, you can actually set the shoe straight or toe out. You have that artistic license, and there's times you might find it works better one way or the other. The other reason why you might end up doing that, which I have done on certain horses, is if you're nailing. If you have a horse that really toes in, and you're in order to get your nail alignment so you can nail into a foot, you might have to shift a shoe a little this way or that way. I don't think it matters because it's plastic. And plastic is so forgiving that I don't think that's a big deal. In metal, that would be a total faux pas. You would never do that, right? So, but in plastic, because the material is so forgiving, I don't think it's a big deal. Um, you can find all of what's in your way. I've got a horse that I do that's rotated and sunk, and in order to balance her, I have to leave her medial heel one inch in front of her lateral heel. Okay, I, I know this because I do it to x-ray. She's the hardest horse that I shoot because her foot is so deformed. And I have to nail on her because she jumps. She's a hunter jumper, she jumps three six. And she doesn't sound. Completely found her to penetrate her soul and in composite shoes for seven years, okay? She jumps. Three six jumpers in speed and she wins. She's fast. Quarters. So what I've had to do with her because I nailed shoes on her, I glue a nail, is I have to offset my shoe one way to catch my white line. I've never seen a detriment for this one. I always have to offset my shoe so she rotated and sunk immediately and she does this. Okay? So when I trim her, I have to lower my outside and leave my medial alone because she's a medial sinker, so my bone to be level and my joint spacing to be even. I have to tip her amazingly on the lateral side. Okay? What that means is I've always got crummy wall on my medial corner because I'm not trimming it very much and she doesn't grow much over there because of her boundary. Right? And so what I end up having to do is build a lot of glue on the medial side and I have to get my nail in wherever I can get my nail in because I have to find my best piece of the wall that I can nail to. So I actually have to turn my shoe so my nail holes line up in a safe place. But didn't you say white lines? Yeah, because I have to I have to put my nail holes lined up with my white line for nailing. Yeah, right. Makes sense. So I have to do something really screwy with the shoe. But this mare has been sound jumping three six for seven years after found her and doing this. She found her when she was four. She's now twelve and she's still sound. So all I'm trying to say is that the blessing of plastic and glue is that it is very easy on the foot. Unlike metal, which you could never do this with because you would be shoving this foot distorting in different directions. And I do this and the feet look really odd. They're the kind of feet that look really good when you look at them from the lateral side, you're like, yeah, and you look at the medial side and you're like, no. Yeah. You know those feet, right? Yeah. You walk around each side and you're like, am I really seeing what I think I'm seeing? It looks good on this side but not that side. And it's because whatever your distortion is, it's just your exterior hook capsule is not telling you the whole story, right? So I've x-rayed this mare and x-rayed this mare and x-rayed this mare and x-rayed this mare. I know what I'm doing is good for her internal alignment. But if you walked in and looked at these feet, you'd be like, what the hell is this? Yeah. <laughs> 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 right. But then when you can x-ray it, you can say, oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, and you can get the vet in there to x-ray and say, check my work here because I'm not sure if this is the right thing to do. Yeah. Then you get confidence, and then your owner gets confidence. Mm -hmm. And then when the other farrier walks in the barn, or the other owner walks in the barn and goes, what the hell is your farrier doing to that feet, their horse's feet? The owner goes, yes. the owner goes, we're fine. We're totally fine. I have confidence in my farrier. We're doing the right thing. I know it looks funny, but this is what my horse needs. And the person walks away going like this, but the owner goes, because they, they have confidence. You know, that's what I love about x-ray is that it's objectively measurable. It's not in a subjective opinion. Right? Would that also work well for a horse that doesn't land flat, medial laterally? Sure. The mm -hmm. thing about land, I mean, it depends on what your philosophy is on how you should be landing. To mm -hmm. me, I would totally tip my hoof capsule to get that horse landing flat. Because mm -hmm. I'm worried about my coffin joint. Right. In my work, right. I'm trying to create neutral coffin joint. Right. Because that's all I've got. A lot of times I have so much distortion and so much like damaged foot, mm -hmm. all I can do is try to get my joint spacing even and get the horse loading in some level way, regardless of how my foot looks at that moment in time. So I've had to break all sorts of the rules we're taught in order to achieve that, which is what's made me creative in my approach and made me appreciative of the prosthetic I can build with my plastic and my glue. It has saved my tushy. I could never do what I do without it. So, you know, 
what you know, the things that we're giving you are like these guidelines and these things to remember. But do I think that that glue on that horse's soul is going to make it sore? Not necessarily. Well, not not with the dental impression yeah. cereal. You're protecting 